we'll just introduce ourselves real quick. We're going to pack this house. Uh, first of all, thank you to everyone for actually showing up. Uh, it means a lot to us. It means a lot to the city of Fort Worth that you would take time out of your schedule to show up to hear about what we have going on. Uh, usually a lot, of, a lot of these meetings you'll see more city staff than you will residents. So I'm glad to see it the other way around tonight. Uh, if we haven't met yet, I'm Charlie Lowersdorf. I'm the newest council member for District 4. Um, and so I happen to represent you guys uh, at council right now. Of course, we have a lot of big things going on, including the budget. So if you're following that, we, uh, Alan and I together, we're, we're fighting for the North. I can guarantee you that. Uh, thankfully, we got some help from Macy and Carlos as well. Uh, but Alan and I, we're taking the brunt of the fight to represent you guys north of the loop and reminding them Fort Worth is north of the loop as well. So uh, we're trying to get additional police officers. We're trying to uh, we're do more by being good stewards of your tax dollars. Uh, so, you know, the proposed tax uh, rate reduction. I mean, we've got a lot of good things coming up. Uh, it's all proposed right now as, uh, like I said, we continue to fight it. So I just want to take a moment to introduce myself. I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Alan Blaylock, and I'm going to let him introduce our team for, uh, for this evening as well. So... Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for being here. I am Alan Blaylock. I live here in Heritage. I'm councilman for District 10, which is basically everything north of Heritage all the way up to Texas Motor Speedway. We're here today to talk about one of the... Oh, yeah, and west all the way to 287. Uh, but we're here today to talk about Ray White and uh, getting it finished you know, up through uh, the east side of heritage here and so I'm going to introduce to you, you to uh, Alejandra Ayala who is our TPW manager responsible for this project. So I'm, I'm Alex Ayala for short. I'm in uh, TPW capital delivery and what we do is we deliver capital to the residents of Fort Worth. I'm the project manager for, for Ray White Road um, and I'm going to introduce some of the team that's helping uh, design and construct this road in, in the near future. Dennis Ingram, he is with Burns and McDonnell. He's one of our design engineers. And we also have uh, McCarthy. McCarthy is our construction manager at risk. We already picked the contractor for this project. Who's gonna, and, and we have Colleen and Dave and John. Uh, they're with McCarthy uh, Buildings Constru uh, Construction Co Company, Inc. And they just finished Harmon Road. So if you guys have been over uh, off Presidio on Harmon Road, um, this is the team that did it. And they were selected to do um, uh, Ray White Road for, uh, on, on this side of the freeway now. And so I'm going to give you a brief uh, presentation. Um, I also wanted to introduce Burkett. Burkett Berhane is back there in the corner. He's one of our new project managers with TPW. As a matter of fact, this is his first week. And so in about three or four months, or maybe five, as soon as he, I you know, train him, he'll be taking over this project um, in, in, in the future. And so, but I'll, I'll still be around to, to answer any questions you may have. So the, I just introduced our team. I'm gonna give you a little bit of agenda. I'm gonna explain what uh, the project manager roles are. I'm gonna show you the project map overview, the scope of the project, and let you know that McCarthy Building Company is our CMAR. We also have a very uh, estimated project schedule and budget and contact information and questions. Um, I also printed out a, a, a little sheet that in the future, we're gonna have more of these meetings. This is just kind of the 30% where we introduce the project uh, on paper and, and let you all see it. We'll have another, uh, another meeting probably about 60% plans. And then um, we'll have a third community meeting when, when it comes time for to start construction so you all know uh, how the construction's gonna work. And, and so this little sheet, we're gonna build upon it um, as, as we fill out the names from, from design to pre-construction services to the construction phase. So like that, you know how to, how to communicate with, with the city, communicate with our project managers, and communicate with McCarthy once this project gets gets started. So our project team consists of myself, Burkett, and, and Raul Lopez. Uh, Raul Lopez is not here tonight. He is our program manager. And then from Burns and McDonald's, I have Dennis here tonight and Haley Smith. She's also one, another one of our engineers. And then uh, from McCarthy, Ricardo's not here, but Dave Wallace is. He's actually the project director. So. 
we'll be co in communication with him throughout the whole time to, to mitigate any kind of issues we may have out in the field. And this is just kind of a, a little brief description on what my role is for the project. Um, I am responsible for coordinating, procuring, and managing contracts and services for the delivery of, of projects uh, whose limits and scope are predefined by the transportation planners. So th this road um, does go through a vetting process with the city, our, our planning division basically are the ones who map out how these streets are gonna look like to accommodate the growth and, and, and then they give us the, what the road should look like and then we, we, we build it. Um, and our, our consultant project manager role uh, is Dennis and his team at Burns and McDonald. And what they do, they help us procure uh, our contractor, they help us design the road, they help us do all the engineering of this road. We don't do any in-house engineering in, at the City of Fort Worth. That all gets um, sent out to, to our consultants to do that work for us. And then our construction manager at risk is McCarthy. Li like I mentioned, they're very, uh, this is their fourth, their fourth project for the City of Fort Worth. Um, and uh, so we're, we're super excited to, to have them on the team because they're, they're a very good contractor and, and, and they did such a great job on Harmon. They did finish on time, so um, we're, we're, we're hoping that that's the case here, but you never know about weather, right? So um, the project map. So everybody that drives down Ray White knows that as you come off of Kroger Drive and you head north, that it chokes down to a two-lane country road. So we're gonna pick it up from about Mirage Drive, wind that out to, to a four lane divide it all the way up to the uh, Bear Creek Bridge. So half of that, the connection's already there for us to tie onto. And so we're just gonna widen that road. Uh, most of the right of way has been obtained on this roadway. It was, it, was, it was dedicated back when all the developments that grew around this road came in. And so we only have a small portion of right away that, that we need to obtain, which is closer over to Wall Price Road. So one of the, one of the things that, that needs to happen on this road is that we are going to put in a traffic signal at Wall Price Road um, at that three-legged three intersection. We're going to widen the intersection at Wall Price Road and include northbound right turn lanes and westbound lanes. Uh, most of this road is going to be a four-lane divided roadway with raised medians, and in some areas we have to put in left turn lanes. Uh, there are, we are gonna construct sidewalks on both sides of the street. This is going to have street lights. And we're also going to do modifications to the, to the existing roundabout at, at Windrook uh, in order to accommodate, right now it's just a, a single lane, it needs to become a dual lane. And we're going to reconstruct it to accommodate the, ex the expansion of, of the roadway. So I'm just gonna go through some pictures of, of, of the existing conditions. Many of you know what it looks like because you all probably probably drive and you all know it's just, it's, it's a two lane road. We have side road ditches and lots of traffic. And you know, with, with the high school being at the corner at Kroger, I'm, I'm sure that a sidewalk would be a, a welcome addition through this, through this older area of, of the road. And then here we're approaching that roundabout. And then there's the connection at, at that existing uh, bridge over Bear Creek. Right now we have a lot of drainage going down this, this, little, this little ditch. I'm sure it becomes a little rushing little creek when, it, when we have those heavy downpours. So all that will be um, underground. That tree is gonna, is gonna come down. Uh, I, I did get asked by Forestry Department if I could put a, me a median around, I can't. It's right in the middle of, 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 of one of our lanes. So this is pretty much what our, our, our typical section looks like on this road. It, it's go I'm not gonna spend too much time, but basically um, we're trying to squeeze, when I say squeeze this road into, into this right of way the best we can. Um, we're we're kind of left with what we're left with and so we're gonna try really hard to, to, to not displace people and uh, to try to work around. There's a lot of trees out there. Unfortunately, I cannot save them, most of them. We're gonna save what we can, but it's, it's either a sidewalk or tree, you know, it, or, or roadway or tree. And, and it's, uh, we 
we've looked at it from the eyes of trying to preserve it, um, but because um, I do get asked that a lot, are you going to cut down these trees? Yes, and those that I can I can save, we will save. But for the most part, we we have to put this this roadway in there. Um, at Wall Price Road, um, it, it's going to have a, a through lane and a two to a left turn and a right turn lane at that intersection. So this is a little brief schematic of what's gonna, it, what it's gonna look like starting at, at Mirage Street. So we're, this section of the road does have medians um, and, and it, they do, most of these streets do meet the spacing requirement for a median, so we're gonna add medians to at, at all the, most all the crossings. And then here we are at um, Wall Price. And then as we continue northbound, pretty much all this road is, is basically the existing lanes are going to stay there while we build the new lanes to the, to the west. So it's a good thing that we, and then we'll switch traffic over in the future when we finish one side. I know there's been some questions on, on Hillcroft Street needing a, a, a signal light. We're in the process of getting traffic counts, but we have to wait for school to start because otherwise our counts are not accurate. So we're gonna let school start, let it do what school does for a couple of weeks, and then you'll probably be seeing those, those black tubes across the street. We're gonna start counting cars to see if, if it warrants a, 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 a light there. Um, typically when you put a, a light up or downstream of an intersection, that does tend to slow cars down at the lights and does create those traffic gaps, um, those gaps in, in, in the amount of cars coming and it, it makes it easier downstream of that light to, to, to make a, the, those left turn movements. And here's the roundabout. The roundabout's not gonna be a circle. It's gonna be a, a, an eye, a, what I call an eyeball uh, because we had to fit this roundabout in the existing right of way. Um, we ha we, we uh, Burns and McDonald played with various different shapes to not impact people's backyards. And so um, this is, the, and this is what we, we came up with. Also, this shape also helps cars. One of the things about roundabouts is you can't make them too circular. You do have to put in um, some radii in it to, to force cars to slow down. Otherwise, it would, it, they, they don't work like they should. So all the geometry is in place to, to help with, with both fitted in the right of way we had and also to, to slow the cards down as they, as they go around the roundabout. And there's a close-up picture of, of, of the roundabout um, at Winbrook, Ray White Road, and then it's Alta Vista, right? Past that. And then um, here's the, the last section of this roadway as it ties into to the bridge. Um, we, we, have, we have all the right of way on the west side so we, we won't be acquiring any right of way at, at that north end of the project. So the, some of the project challenges I could, were highlighted here on the slide. Um, so trying to build this road while people are on it is definitely a challenge and uh, we're gonna try to maintain the most efficient traffic flow as possible for the traveling puff, public during construction phases. Um, we, we understand there's a lot of schools in the vicinity and so uh, we keep a, a list of, of stakeholders that we communicate any time that we have um, changes to, to traffic patterns to make sure we communicate, especially to the bus, the bus drivers. And um, also pedestrian traffic safety from the roundabout to the bridge. We, have, we also have to relocate uh, some franchise utilities protection of existing utilities and phasing of storm drain construction and right-of-way constraints at Wall Price Keller Road. Those are just some of the challenges that we had to take into consideration while, while designing. Um, I've had uh, several residents call me and ask me about drainage. Um, this project, the, uh, right now, the, the water flows from the west to the east and goes down the hill where uh, um, some of you live. A, a lot of that water will be intercepted by the street uh, because it's going to have, you know, your, un your typical underground storm drain system with curb and gutter. So we'll, all of the, that rushing water that used to come from one side of the street will get conveyed through the street into the storm drain system and go off to, to Big Bear Creek. So here's a very, very rough estimate of where we are as far as schedule. Um, we've been working with 
Burns and McDonnell and McCarthy to, to finish design. We're at about 30% right now. Um, we still have um, a lot more to go. So what, so we're, we're thinking that we selected M McCarthy back in February and then we started our constructability reviews with them in, in April. So we're, get, we're about to start a right away um, acquisition this fall. We have to get a little bit further past 30%, make sure our, our street's gonna fit, make sure that we're not moving our medians or our sidewalk before we actually start obtaining right away. Um, once we obtain right away, which is, which is critical, then we'll, we're gonna, we have to relocate a lot of franchise utilities. So that's gonna be, uh, and, and they, we can't do it until we have, give them a place to go. So we're, I'm estimating that it usually takes about, I don't know, six months to a year to get right away, and then maybe six months to a year to get, to get uh, utilities moved. So that's why it takes, it seems like it takes forever for us to build anything, and it's mainly because of the right away acquisition time and the franchise utility relocation time, because we've gotta clear all that out of, out of the way and then um, and all the, all the coordination that goes with them to make sure they don't put their lines in our storm drain, et cetera, et cetera. So we're thinking construction is gonna start sometime in the winter of 2025. And right now, I'm, I'm, I just say it's gonna take about 24 months to complete. Um, the schedule will, will become tighter as we get more into design as McCarthy reviews plans as McCarthy is able to, to figure out how, we're go how they're gonna build this, then we'll start honing in closer into ex actual dates. So right now I'm just kind of giving you seasonal dates because that's, that's the best I could do at this point in time. Um, the project budget, um, the project budget is about $19 million. Um, right now, uh, this was part of the 2022 bond fund project, which we received $23 million for this project. And we also have uh, traffic impact funds and, and from other sources that contributed 2.3 million into this, into the budget. And really that's the end of my presentation, but I did wanna tell everyone about, a lot of people don't know we have My Fort Worth app. Um, if you could download that from your, your um, Samsung or iPhone app store, it, it's really convenient, it allows you to, to Basically, take a picture of whatever it is you need needs to be addressed. It it it, it actually drops a GPS date a pin on it, and you could send it off. It, it, it's anything from potholes to missing signs to street animal control, um, code compliance issues. It, it's it, it it's pretty it's pretty loaded with information, and and you could just take a picture of it and send it off to the city and somebody will respond to that, to that complaint. And um, there's my name, um, Alex Ayala, and, and my phone number, I also have cards up here. And then our, for traffic concerns, Raj, Raj Gupta is our, our, tra our traffic engineer for, for the city.